Hello, Tab Nation. Once again, it's Tom, and today we're going to talk about libraries, how to include them in your script, and go over some details why they're useful, when you want to use them, maybe when you don't want to use them. Um, so it's pretty simple, but it has a lot of great uh, things that you can do with it. So let's go ahead and jump into that code, shall we? All right. So we're going to do a very simple script here. And uh, basically to include a library, it's just the hashtag or the pound sign, depending on you know, what generation you're from, include, and then you just put the file path of where your library is going to be. So mine, as always in these videos, is just going to be on my desktop. I made a folder called library, and then I have one in there just called mycoollibrary.ahk. And let's take a look at that actual script. So a library is just another script, is all it is. But look at this. This script is, let's see, 850 lines of code. So let's say this is a function or whatever that I'm using all the time. I, I use it in all my scripts. Do I really want to sit there and have to put in every script 850 lines of code? Or do I just want to have it in one spot and then I can call upon it for multiple scripts? It's, it's going to make a lot of your scripts way awesome, way cleaner, more efficient. So yeah, all you're doing is that, you know, include right here. And then I'm just doing a simple array, a val. Uh, that's what the uh, script's doing. That's what the function's calling on. It's basically doing some math here. And it's going to display it in the message box. So we'll go ahead and run that real quick. Wrong thing. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to push F1. There we go. We got our answer. 79. So that's really all it's doing. It, you know, it... it Basically, it went to do, okay, let's do an array. It hit this function right here to call upon, in which case it jumps over here uh, from where it had originally pulled it. And it uh, runs that. So instead of this script right here being, you know, 852 lines of code, now it's only three lines of code. Well, four, technically, with that include up there. So yeah. Now, something to remember uh, is it acts like it's one script. So let's say I make a mistake here. I put in the word hello. Obviously, that is not a valid command. That should throw an error. But we're going to launch it from the library, and it's still going to get that error. And there we go. And it tells you which script it's having the issue with. So it's showing me that the problem is at mypoollibrary.ahk. Hello, this is not recognized as an action. So even though there's an issue in this script, it's going to be noticed in the script that I'm launching and it's being included into. So, really, there's a few reasons why this is good and there's a few reasons why this is bad. I was kind of looking at other people's opinions and I came across Jack's autohotkeyblog.com and he worded this so well. So I'm just going to kind of use what he was saying because I, I agree with pretty much everything he said here. So I labeled this as the good. Uh, by keeping a general function in a library, you can use that function in any script without explicitly adding the code. And that's where you're using that include there. Um, so th that's really the main reason why you're going to be doing this, so you don't have to uh, put the code in there. Number two is if you make any changes to the function, it updates for every script that uses it without needing to alter each script you know that's going to be a huge time saver you know if you're using that code a lot in that library you only got to make a change you know maybe you're making an improvement you only have to do it there but if you have it in 10 scripts you make that improvement you have to go into all 10 scripts to make that improvement you know that's it's going to be a huge time saver you know especially if you're using it a ton uh, when compiling scripts, auto hotkeys will auto include the library functions in the standalone executable, which is nice that it'll automatically just do that to you. You don't have to like merge them, then compile. It just automatically does it. And that's because when you do include, it's basically pulling it into it and acting like it's one script. Now, obviously, there are reasons why you might not want to use this. Uh, when loading the script, you must evaluate the function only as a direct function call or an expression to initiate the auto-include. So the reason why you wouldn't want to do this is because when you're calling a function with a set timer or uh, through a uh, GUI, uh, it's not going to work very well. The control is just, it's not going to work. So 
you gotta kind of play with that see what does and doesn't work but you'll know obviously in which case hey you just got to copy the code and you can't use a library It'll take you 10 seconds to copy and paste the code from one script to the other so you can always test it um scripts lose uh, their portability yeah this is definitely something i've ran into uh, especially at work uh, if you want to share the scripts or move them to another computer unless you're compiling it which sometimes you are sometimes you aren't you must uh you have to basically embed the function into the script because it's just not going to transfer over unless you're giving them both the scripts and in which case you got to make sure that the file path is correct in which case you know the person might not know how to code or you know maybe later on they move it somewhere and then suddenly it breaks the whole script so basically you got to be careful you know you got two scripts you got to make sure they're always in sync with each other you know especially when you're moving to another computer or maybe you're just moving files around your pc so yeah that's that's something i've ran into when you're you know at a company where you're sharing a script with 500 people Obviously, I'm not probably going to use the library because it's so easy to break it uh, for each user. Uh, if you make a change to the function, it affects every script calling it. This can, you know, mess something up. Yeah, the function is the same in your library, but how each script maybe handles it can be different. So making a change could break it. I mean, there's not a lot of times that's really going to happen because you're probably using the function the same way in each script. But yeah, I mean, you could have something that could definitely break one script because you made the change in the library. In which case, you probably just copy the code in there or go somehow adjust the one script. Really depends on the situation there. Uh, take care when choosing function names. You can invertedly create conflicts by writing functions in your new scripts. When you use the name, same name, yeah, so if you do something simple with a function in your library called, like, math, and then one day you're writing another one and you use the exact same function, math, but then try to do, like, an include, they're going to, like, conflict with each other. So that one's just, be good at naming your functions, I guess, you know, be detailed with them. Honestly, if it's something I should be better at, I'm very bad at variable naming and function naming, I'm, I just, I kind of put them very simple. But adding a little bit more descriptive names is definitely going to help kind of avoid this problem a lot more. Uh, do not include script-specific functions in a library. They only cause confusion for both yourself and other users when later reviewing and altering scripts. Kind of goes with, like, the whole thing of, you know, just uh, trying to, I don't know, like, organize and stuff. That one's... I don't really see happening very often, but yeah, these are kind of like the good, the bad, the ugly. No real uglies here, but yeah, this is from jexautohockeyblog.com. Great website for auto hockey stuff. Uh, you know, I reference it quite a bit. It, it's really well done. He's been doing it for quite a long time, it seems. So yeah, this is a very basic intro to libraries. If you have any questions, run into any issues or whatnot, or have any ideas on how I could expand on this video, if you, you know, you have something fancy you like to do with libraries, definitely hit me up in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely hit that subscribe button. Doing two to three videos every single week having to do with automation, specifically auto hockeys. All right, guys, see you on the next one.